Hello there, Ed Egan, Hawken Audio. Today I'm going to talk about a little DIY project I did for the Continue Mini. And it is a touche control right over here. This touche control um, allows me to use two hands to generate one note. And so what I can do is sort of split the responsibilities of where my pitch is with on my right hand and the pressure and the Y position, front to back position, with my left hand on this touche control. This is a, a split of um, musical performance um, input. It's not nothing unique. You you have uh, you know like a um, a violin uh, that has a bow, and so you bow with one hand and play with the other, or a guitar where you strum with one hand and, and play with the other. There's also a history of electronic instruments doing this uh, same sort of thing. Uh, most famously, perhaps, would be uh, Maurice Martineau's Own Martineau, uh, which had this touche control and, and then a um, pitch control with the right hand. And there it was strictly just a, uh, a volume control. Um, more recently, uh, Naoyuki Omo has built uh, the Andomo, which is a, uh, it's kind of like this modern steampunk version of, of uh, the Martineau. It's very, very beautifully made. But for me, a more interesting uh, uh, development in that sort of line is what Mike Bouchamp with Theravox is doing with his Theravox instruments. I think that these are really nice um, developments within this kind of con continuous control and touche control with the left hand. And there's a touche area that's implemented and available in the Continuum fingerboard, uh, accessible through specifying an area on the surface that's going to be this touche control. And uh, there are a number of sounds that are designed for the Continuum that take advantage of this touche so that you have that independent left hand control and right hand control. It's the touche on the Continuum is much more sophisticated because it's essentially a three-dimensional pad rather than these kind of one-dimensional volume controls on other types of um, touche-enabled uh, hardware. So to understand how this touche is working um, on the Continue Mini, uh, you have to sort of understand how the Continue Mini generates uh, notes. And so what happens is when you press on a particular position on the Mini, you're pressing down on a contact strip which senses the contact and it also senses what position you are. So you'll get note actuation that is um, also giving you uh, pitch information as you move back and forth. Uh, the pressure and the front to back comes from this whole moving plate that is the, the sensor strip is mounted on. The plate has uh, sensors on the corners so it can tell how it's rocking and how far down it's going and that's how it generates this Z position this Y position, the front to back, the pressure in the front to back. Now, a fact about this a sensor strip that's mounted on top of the uh, this pressure plate, um, it doesn't extend all the way. It doesn't extend all along to the sides here on the on the bottom and the top. <clears throat> it doesn't extend all the way to the edges. So um, it, it really doesn't matter when you play because it's really quite hard to get a finger into those positions and I find that it doesn't affect my playing at all and I can always play on the strip. But it also means that we can take advantage of the fact that we can now press down on the plate and not actually get a note. So like if I press over here, you see I'm not getting a note right in the corners and also down over here. 
um, in, on the very edges here too. It's the same sort of deal. So what I can do is I can use something to press down on this plate and then influence as I move it down or move it rocket this way or that way. Uh, that allows me to generate uh, Z and Y values that um, are independent uh, until they'll be applied when the note is, is started. And so what I did was I built this touche control and I made it out of um, just some materials that I had around the studio here. Uh, it's, it's not really complicated at all. Um, it did take a little while to make it mainly because the plastic that I used was kind of tricky to cut. So uh, these are the materials that I used uh, for the base to stick it on the mini and it's just stuck there so if it's non-destructive you can remove it and also because it's so far off on the side it doesn't get away get in the way of playing down over here so I still got full use of the um, uh, the mini surface um, and it's out of the way of the other controls that I have for the octave switching and the presets so on the bottom there is uh, I use one of these cable tie sticky things just like that sort of thing and then uh, the, for the spongy layer because we want to be able to press it down I just had some of this packing sponge probably a product came with it and I, and I cut out a little corner of it and placed it and glued it super glued it on top of uh, of this uh, cable tie thing and the hard part was um, finding material that I can make the plastic out of so I had this um, these old eight millimeter cassette tape holders, like data backup holders, uh, had a bunch of extra ones. So I just cut out a L-shaped piece to go on top of there. And then finally, uh, this is probably something you don't have lying around, but I happen to have it. Um, I have an old, uh, like a prototype, Continue Mini neoprene surface. And so I just cut out a square of that in order to um, uh, have something you want to have something that is um, not sticky what I found was um, if you're putting your hand here quite a bit and you had just something like this plastic you know for me there's just enough tackiness and sweatiness that when I'm playing it my finger would kind of stick a little bit so so the nice thing about this nylon is that it just uh, it stays dry and it's, it's 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 very very nice and has a lot of good contact and finally, you know, to assemble that whole thing, I just use super glue, which is um, really fast and easy for this sort of thing. Um, but I'm not a fan of it because it's so sticky. If you, get, you know, you invariably get it on your fingers. I, I can't seem to avoid that. So that's the, uh, that's the little touche thing over there. And so what advantages does this touche give you? Let me just put this stuff back over here. So what I found was, uh, I could increase the Z and the Y accuracy so much so that uh, I, I just found it much easier to play and to do very slow uh, controls and especially really nice for controlling the Y direction reliably. And if you think of it, when I'm moving this plate now, so instead of um, uh, you know, rocking this plate back and forth as it goes this way and that way. I'm actually grabbing it on the end here with this contact. And I have uh, just sort of two times the information of um, the control coming back and forth. So remember, when you use a controller like this, you're still getting pressure and front to back information from your finger but you can supplement it with the control that you get out of on the left hand and the other thing that um, this allows me to do is I can start um, a sound from a non-zero point so for instance if I load up this other preset and I'm going to turn down that echo effect If I press down this, no note sounds, but I can... And without. And 
And because I'm getting these Z values from over here, I don't have to apply as much pressure with my right hand to um, play it uh, loud. And so, uh, because I can play lighter with my right hand, I find I can be faster and doing little figures like that. Thank you. 